Thank you very much, uh, Joan, for leading us in prayer. And for all those that have prayed and led us in prayer this evening, we thank the Lord for this opportunity that we are gathered in his presence. Yeah, um, my name is uh, Peace Feta, and I do worship at um, Tony Croft Chapel uh, at UCU. And um, I am glad that this opportunity has been availed, that we are able to share together in the word of the Lord. And uh, first, I would ask that we pray again, and then we continue into the word. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come before you and we continue to bless and honor your name. We thank you for this opportunity that you've given us, that we're able to gather in your presence, O Lord. Just as you declare in your word, that see how good it is when brethren meet together. It is like the oil that flows down Aaron's beard. Father, we pray that, Lord, even as we are together, virtually King of glory, you will continue to uphold us with your own right hand. You will continue to grow in, uh, grow your hunger and your thirst in each and every one of us. You will continue to minister and to meet each and every one of us at a very point of need. I pray that tonight you will speak to me and through me, King of glory. The Lord, I will decrease that you will increase, King of glory. That, Father, you will silence every other voice around us that we shall hear you speak to us, King of glory. Father, I pray that, King of glory, you alone may be exalted in all this. Be magnified and be exalted and may you be lifted on high. For, Lord, it is in Jesus' name that we do pray and believe with thanksgiving. Amen. Uh, tonight, we are going to be sharing from uh, Isaiah chapter 9, uh, from verses 6 to 7. And our, uh, our, our, our topic for tonight is the son given as a wonderful counselor. The son given as a wonderful counselor. And we are reading, taking it on from Isaiah chapter 9, from verses 6. And it says, for unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. And the government will be upon his shoulder, and his name will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace, of his increase, of the increase of his government and peace, there will be no end. Upon the throne of David and over his kingdom, to order it and establish it with judgment and justice from, the, from that time forward, even forever. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. Amen. And uh, as we are speaking this, uh, we are just reminded that uh, this is a scripture that comes to us and reminds us of the season of Advent in which we are operating, a season that is drawing us uh, to uh, a, a time when we remember the birth of Christ that was uh, born for us and uh, for the purpose of our own redemption. And we know that this season here, much as we are excited about it, about the being able to meet family again, being able to uh, get some rest of work, being able to meet the people we have not met in a long while, we are, we are many times um, diverted from what exactly the, the, the season is about, because the season is not just about eating food. The season is not just about traveling. The season is not just about us merrymaking. The season is about us thinking about our eternity in God. The season is about drawing us to a place where we know that we are worshiping God in spirit and in truth. It is a season that seeks to renew us. It is a season that we should desire to be transformed in every aspect and every area of our lives. But unfortunately, uh, there it, it has all been counterfeited and we are excited about new clothes. When we are growing up, we are excited about the lots of food. We are excited about uh, traveling to the villages to meet uh, uh, our grandparents and meet cousins and family. But it is just beyond that. We are thinking about this son that has been given to us, this son, that has been called a wonderful counselor. And who is he? And Isaiah verse six is speaking to the children of Israel 
who are in captivity at the time that this prophecy is actually being made. When you read the chapters before that, we are actually uh, uh, we actually notice that the children of Israel have gone through a tough season. They are in Babylon and all hope seems to be lost. And then this prophecy comes through the prophet Isaiah. And he tells them, for unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. And they are wondering who this child is. They're from the time when he makes this prophecy to the time when the prophecy is actually uh, fulfilled, it is a long, long time. But yet the, the word of the Lord still stands and the word of the Lord still prevails. And Israel, who is in captivity to, uh, at, the, at this point, is, is not even thinking about this Christ that they are actually talking about because to them, they were not expecting a Christ to be born in flesh. They were expecting somebody to come from wherever or to be appointed from among them. And they thought that would be the person, the ruler that would be able to reign over them. So when they are being told for unto us a child is born and unto us a son is given, it seems rather a strange phenomena for them because that is not the kind of thing they had been anticipating or had been waiting for. But we read when we continue in these very scriptures here, we look at uh, what is written. And then we look at uh, Luke chapter 2, verses 11. When the angel announces to the shepherds and the angel says, the birth, uh, the birth of God's son, Jesus, is announced and is made to the shepherds. For unto you is born this day in the city of David, a savior who is Christ the Lord. The same proclamation is being made, but this time it is in Luke. And this time when the proclamation is being made, it, the angel of the Lord is proclaiming it to the shepherds. And it is actually fulfilled. The scripture is finally being fulfilled from the time of Isaiah in chapter nine. And now into Luke, when the scripture is being fulfilled and Christ indeed has been born. And when you read the scriptures, he continues to instruct them on where they are going to go and what the sign is gonna be for them and how how they would find this child wrapped up and the location and they would be able to go and worship him. And when we read, this is just uh, a scripture for us to look at when it says that um, for unto us a child is born, okay? When we continue part B, to us a son is given, the prophecy, um, this is a prophecy of a Messiah that he was to come. As we read through the text, we cannot help but think about how gracious and merciful God has been to us by giving us his only son. And we see this fulfilled in the scripture that is in John 3, 16. And it's many years later. And it says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only one and begotten son that whosoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. There is a promise for us that is being fulfilled and there is a hope for us to hold on to in this son that is going to be given or this son that is promised unto us, in this child that is, is born in the city of David and his name is wonderful counselor and his name is an everlasting father. His name is a mighty God and his name is a prince of peace. Uh, friends, as we continue uh, looking at this, I would like to draw our attention a little bit and we look at what it is exactly. When we look at it, and I just was wondering why of all names, because our wonderful counselor is one of the names of, of Christ that, uh, that, that we know. And we know that wonderful in itself is just a noun or another name for Christ. He is a, he's wonderful in dealing with us as children of the new covenant through him. His wonderfulness is seen in his life and his triumph over death and the grace that he actually does avail unto us. And we know that this is not something that we do take for granted, but indeed it is a gift that the Lord has given to us. Praise the Lord. Am I being heard? Yes, you are. Praise the Lord. Yes, you are clear. Amen. Okay, we continue. Sorry for that. And we continue to read uh, as we continue in this very scripture here. There will be uh, scriptures that I may ask that we may take note of at a certain point. We may not be able to read through all of them. 
And uh, we read, uh, continuing in these very scriptures, that the government will be upon his shoulder. And now this is a, a, a scripture that we read and we are wondering many times because it is speaking about the birth of Christ, but yet we are talking about a government being put upon his shoulders. What exactly does this mean to us? But in the season of Advent that we are moving in, in the season of Advent where we are operating, we know that it is a season that speaks of hope. It is a season that speaks of joy. It is a season that speaks of peace. It is a season that speaks of love. And this is all demonstrated in this son that is to be born and in this, son, in this child that is to be born and in this son that is actually promised to be given unto us or has already been given unto us. So we know that this is these are the major things that we should be looking out for in the season of Advent, as opposed to the things that the world have actually chosen to present to us. And unfortunately, many other times that as Christians, we have been uh, swept off and been weighed off and con uh, continue to follow what the world has presented to us. But as children, as God's children, we are comforted that the enemy uh, will not always abandon us. But the son who is given will come and of his increase and of the increase of his government and of peace, there will be no end. This is for me the encouragement that is in the scripture that we are reading that and the government will be upon his shoulder and his name will be called. The government being upon his shoulder already is speaking to us about this God. When we continue to read the scriptures and very many other scriptures, we, 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 we know that there is an assurance of a continuity. In the, in the years before Christ is actually born, we notice how the children of Israel continued under oppression. Severally, they were. This scripture is actually being presented to them during the time when they were in captivity, uh, uh, when they were in captivity, and even when after they were out of captivity is when the scripture is actually fulfilled. And the children of Israel are wondering what exactly is going to happen because they have suffered under the hands of the Assyrians. They have suffered under the hands of the Babylonians. They have suffered under the hands of very many ruthless leaders. And the nation has been torn apart. The nation has been split apart and they have faced a lot of wars from either sides in their lives. And so when this assurance is coming to us that as children of God, we are receiving this comfort that the enemy will not continue to burden us. Because even in the scriptures, in the, in, in, in the gospels, he says, come to me, all you that are weary and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke for it is light to carry. So we have that assurance that we shall not continue to be burdened because there is a God, there is a savior, there is uh, somebody that is coming, that is uh, given unto us, a Messiah that is coming, and we are not going to continue in this kind of suffering. Uh, the other thing for us to note is that we are also encouraged that there is no rival that can conquer the kingdom of God because it's established with justice and righteousness. In this kingdom that is to be established, in this kingdom that is going to, that is promised to us, we have an assurance that there will be no rival that can be able to overtake or overthrow it. One well, like what had happened before, we can see from the different accounts, even Nebuchadnezzar that was very strong and mighty, even Nebuchadnezzar was overthrown. And we know that very many other people came on uh, uh, many times uh, uh, because of the various things that they kept doing, because of the sins and because of the pain they kept inflicting upon people. You find that they would be overthrown or the kingdoms would be taken away from them uh, and, and this changed hands. Our assurance in this is that this kingdom will have no end and this kingdom cannot be conquered because it is a kingdom that belongs to God and because it is established its major establishment is on justice and on righteousness that actually speaks of the Lord and there are four major th and, uh, things uh, here that I want uh, to draw our, us to draw our attention to when we continue reading and they're mentioning these names here. Many times we mention them when you are, we are seated. You know, wonderful counselor, mighty God, prince of peace and all that. These are just but among the names of Christ. And in the name wonderful counselor, which is one of our main focuses tonight, the, 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 the promised son or now the given son to us, the Messiah that has come to us is a counselor who is able to make wise plans, 
on our behalf and we can entrust him because he is he has wisdom that he, because he knows he, he has been with god before and he is god himself and he comes and he knows what exactly is best for us and that is why he comes and he's given a name of a wonderful counselor because his counsel is not just human counsel his counsel is because of his uh, uh, prior knowledge of what exactly it is because the bible tells us that and uh, the, the, the 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 trio agreed that let us make man uh, and he is in that whole uh, picture in the beginning when they are saying, let us make man. And then when we read in John and he say, continues to tell us, and the word was with God and the word was God. And you know, and this word is actually Christ himself. Therefore we know that he is a wonderful counselor and he is able to make wise plans for and on our behalf. Just as it is written in Jeremiah 29, 11, that for I alone knows the plans that I have for you declares the Lord plans to prosper you and not to harm you. It is a scripture that we many times want to read and run with. And we forget who is this that has got these plans for us? Who is this that can give us this counsel? Who is this that can actually fulfill this? And it is this wonderful counselor that can be able to fulfill this. But in Judges chapter 13, verses 18, in Judges chapter 13, verses 18, uh, Judges chapter 13, verses 18, has an interesting scripture. And it says, uh, this is, uh, Judges chapter 13 talks about the birth of Samson. And Samson, uh, we all know that is born to his mother at a point where she did not have any child and she had been written off probably, declared barren and she could not have children. And then just like Mary, she encounters an angel and then the angel speaks to her and tells her, you know, you are buried, but you are going to have a child. And this child here, we, you should not make sure you do not contaminate yourself. Drink no wine or anything that is similar to read for this child shall be a Nazareth. Okay. To the, to God from the womb and he shall be delivered uh, and, and he shall begin to deliver Israel out of the hand of the Philistines. Now you want to see that the circumstances and uh, uh, under which Samson is born, but he is born at a time when the Philistines are in under oppression and the Lord is seeking for a person that has not defiled himself completely that is going to be used. And similarly, we know that this is the same thing that happens to us when the Messiah is being born. The uniqueness with the Messiah is he is not just born of man. He is born in man's image, but he is not born of man, but it is the spirit of the Lord. But in verses 18, the angel, uh, 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 she asks the angel, and the angel of the Lord said to him, why do you ask my name? Seeing Seeing it, seeing it is wonderful. Why do you ask my name? Seeing it is wonderful. So we know that this wonderful counselor is just not uh, 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 somebody that is coming to us and you here, but he has been there before, but he has been in different and various capacities. So we can trust him because he alone actually knows the very end from the beginning. Sometimes his counsel may not seem to make sense, but we are called to submit because in Isaiah 55 verses nine, it tells us that for as far as the heavens are, are, are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways and my thoughts than your thoughts. So we can never try to equate our thoughts to the thoughts of God, our thoughts to the thoughts of Christ. And this wonderful counselor is just telling us, you know, I am able, I am able if you can trust me. And God is asking us this day in this season that we may trust him with everything. Many times as Christians, we have trusted God with bits and pieces of our lives. Lives. But there are areas of our lives that we think we can be able to handle. There are areas of our lives that we think this one is for me to deal with. But the Lord is calling us in this season and he's challenging us that we should surrender totally to him each and everything. He is able to actually give us the counsel that we seek and the counsel that we may desire. Uh, one of the Psalms tells us that blessed is the man who walketh. Uh, who, uh, some, actually, it is Psalm 1. Psalm 1, let me just stand there. Blessed is a man who does not sit in the counsel of the wicked. Okay? 
And these are some of the, the scriptures that we are looking at. But this is the person that we actually know has not sat in the council of any wicked. For me and you, certainly being that we are human, we may not, we may, I cannot say I have not sat in the council of the wicked, because sometimes the, the, the people that are offering the wicked council are actually our very own parents, but we, we cannot avoid them. But for this particular one, he did not sit in the council of the wicked. And someone is telling us, blessed is the man who does not walk in the council of the wicked or stand in the way of sinners or sit in the seat of mockers. And this God, this Messiah, this wonderful counselor that we have actually chosen to believe this day, that we are actually looking forward to uh, uh, re remembering his birth is a, a person that we are able to fully entrust ourselves and our every area of our lives into his hands. Number two, uh, he is called the mighty God. The son given to us shall be to, sh the son given to us shall be the mighty God. In John 1, 14, we are told that he became flesh and dwelt among us, okay? In his might, he, was, he became man and he dwelt among us. He walked on earth like we did. He identified with us. He went through pain like we go through pain so that he could, we could understand and know that this person knows what we are going through. Many times when we are faced with challenges as Christians and somebody comes to talk to us, sometimes we sit back and you're wondering, hmm, do you even understand? Have you even gone through this? Do you? But if somebody who has gone through a similar circumstance comes to you and speaks to you, there is a tendency for you to actually understand or relate exactly with the pain that the person is actually going through. But I am encouraging us this day that the person that we have chosen to believe is the one that has actually lived this life that we have lived. He has been rejected. He was accused. He was even killed. For us, we have been rejected. We have been accused, but we have not been killed. But for him, he was even killed. Yet, he had no sin, and yet me and you have got sin. So may we be encouraged that this one here that we have believed is actually not just anybody, but he is a mighty God. In Luke eleven twenty, we are told, but if I uh, but if I drive out demons by the finger of God, then the kingdom of God has come to you. Okay. If I drive out demons by the finger of God, then the kingdom of God has come to you. That is how mighty he is. I sat back when I, when I read the scripture and I was imagining, I looked at my finger and I'm like, okay, by my finger, just the finger, and he drives out demons. But you see, that is how mighty he is because me alone with my finger, I cannot do anything. But him, he is able to drive out demons with just his finger. That is how mighty he is. That is how gracious he has been. And in John 1, uh, 3, 8, we can read that scripture. We can also read Titus chapter 2, verses 13. We continue to see how he demonstrates his he demonstrates his might among us, yet in a very humble way that he continues uh, to draw many to himself. Number three, we are looking at him as an everlasting father. The son given to us shall be an everlasting father. And I want us to read together Romans chapter 8, verses 28. Romans 8, 28. Together, I'm just standing there uh, briefly. Um, Romans chapter 8. Yep, yeah. Romans chapter 8, verses 28. Romans 8, 28. Yeah. And we know that all things work together for the good of those who love the Lord, to those who are called according to his purpose. Okay? For I know everything, and we know that all things work together for good to those who love God, to those who are called according to his purpose, for whom he knew he also predestined to be conformed to his image, to the image of his son that he might be the firstborn among many brethren, okay? So he is an everlasting father, and we are told when we read the, uh, for the scriptures uh, following here in, in Isaiah 9, that his government will have no end. His kingdom will have no end. 
You know, he will rule and his rulership is for eternity. And we are encouraged because we know that we are not dealing with a person that actually comes to an end with a given period of time. When we look at this, when we are growing up, uh, for those of us that still have our parents, we bless the Lord. For those that have lost our parents, we know that we do not understand what exactly it means. When you are a child and you see your father and you see your mother every day, everything seems to be very okay. But the reality hits you when one of these people is not there, especially when your father is not around. Then you realize actually things have actually changed. But we have an encouragement that the one we have believed is one who actually has got no end. He himself is eternity. And we know that we can actually hold on to him irrespective of all that is happening around us. Number four, uh, he is talked of as the Prince of Peace. The son who is to be born to us uh, shall bring with him peace. And in Romans chapter five, verses one, therefore, since we have been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Okay? Therefore, since we have been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. The, he's a prince of peace. Because the Bible is, calls him the prince of peace, we know that we continue to read the scriptures that tell us about, um, actually in uh, Philippians, I think it's in Philippians chapter 4 verse 7, that talks about uh, the may the peace of God, and, and this is usually uh, used uh, many times by the priests when they are blessing us and all that, and they mention it, may the peace of God which transcends, and some versions will say, which surpasses all human understanding, guard your hearts and minds, and it is this peace that he gives, the peace that he has promised, because he himself is the prince of peace. His peace reigns and in situations where we do not even sometimes understand. I know that each of us that is listening and that is on call tonight, there have been moments and seasons when we have experienced things and we just cannot explain why we seem to be at peace when you should actually have reacted or said something. And you know, when you're growing up and children are having fights and we would have fights, and then when sometimes you do not want to engage yourself in a fight, then your friends will come and say, no, you do something, also you do something. And because of the courage they give you, you find yourself actually engaging in a fight that you wouldn't have actually engaged in. But today as Christians, we go through circumstances, we go through situations in our homes, in our marriages, in our places of work, and sometimes situations that would actually ordinarily require you to do something, require you to react, require you to behave in a certain way. And you choose not to say anything, you choose not to react, you choose not to retaliate, and the peace of God just overflows in you, that everybody looks and wonders. And you've heard those statements, eh, and you did nothing. How could you? But you see, it is not just you. It is because you have chosen to open up your heart to this Messiah. You've chosen to open up your heart to the Prince of Peace. He has taken rulership over you, and he has taken charge over you. And therefore, he guides your every decision. He is the wonderful counselor that we are talking about. He guides the decisions that you are to make so that you do not behave in a way that people think you should behave or the way you used to behave. But because of this transformation in your life, then you choose to behave in a way that only brings glory and honor to the name of the Lord. Amen. I, 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 like, I want to encourage us that uh, irrespective of all that is happening, it is good sometimes, not sometimes, it is good to sit back and seek counsel and the counsel of the Lord in whatever it is. There have been moments in my in my life where I have sat back and wondered what why things are happening. And you know, sometimes I am overwhelmed and I do not know. I, I, I practically sit and ask a real question, like I am speaking to you now, and I'm like, now God, this one, what should someone do? Just like that, and I am I am puzzled. I do not know that to be annoyed or to be happy. I do not know what to respond. So sometimes you sit back and say, Now God, surely for this one, what should I do? And even in those circumstances says, surely God actually gives counsel because he alone is the Prince of Peace and his peace reigns over each and every other thing. And in uh, Ephesians chapter 2 verses 14, it says that for he himself is our peace who has made a both one and has, has broken down the middle wall of separation 
having abolished in in his in the, in his flesh the enmity that is the law um, the law of, the law of commandments contained in ordinances as to create in himself one a new man from the two that's making peace this whole scripture here when you read it from verses 14 to 18 uh, to 18 actually it is just talking and mentioning uh, about uh, the peace that comes in Christ or the Christ, the peace of Christ that actually prevails. And uh, uh, Paul, uh, as he writes the Ephesians, he is mentioning this, for in him is our peace. Who is he that, that is referring to? His reference is to Christ. In him, Christ is our peace, who has made both one, okay, and has broken down the middle wall of separation. That wall, whatever it is that has been separating us, whatever it is that is separating you, God has actually broken it. Christ has actually broken it so that we are able to commune together with him and we are able to actually reach out and be uh, uh, ministered to him. Now, I want to draw our attention a little bit to who this wonderful counselor is. God has provided us with a wonderful counselor in the person of Jesus Christ. But there are questions that we want to ask ourselves just to think about and things for us to ponder about. How often do we seek his counsel in our daily lives? Okay. Or how quick are we to seek the counsel of other people? Some of us, even as Christians, we claim to be, we find that we still seek the counsel of the dead. We still seek the counsel of the witches. We still seek the counsel of our grandparents and the counsel of our parents and friends. You can name it all our peers. That is where we seek our counsel from. We seek counsel from our church leaders, okay? And the various places that we run to for counsel. But the question here is how often do we seek counsel from him in our daily life for so every decision that you are to take? There are decisions that we take and we look at as simple. And I say it that many times we have actually fallen into the trap of thinking that this one, God, I can handle for you, you can handle this one here. These ones you can leave me to handle. As small as issues as uh, decisions of us being able to get probably maybe house helps in our homes. And we do not care. We say, no, that one I can handle. I can get somebody and I can pay them an amount of money. But you see, my brothers and sisters, it is not just about the money. It is about the covenant that this person is actually bringing and working with into your house. It is about the God that this person is actually worshiping. It is about the altar that this person is representing. It is about very many things. So it is not you that can decide that. It is the Lord that can actually be able to give you proper guidance. And you have found sometimes where we have all experienced this, especially when you are a mother and you have got little ones and you're struggling a season comes where almost on a monthly basis you are having a new nanny in the house. But many times that is actually happening because you have not taken time to pray. My brothers and sisters, I want to tell you this i say this out of experience because when i had the second child actually that the, between the first and the second child i actually i think reached a time where i think i had about uh, about i think 10 nannies yes and almost every two or three months i would have a new nanny and interestingly the reasons would be would be very interesting when they would want to go somebody would wake up in the morning and tell you my, dad, my grandfather told me to go back home. And then you're asking them, where is your grandfather? He died. And now how did he tell you to go back home? I dreamt, he told, he came to me in a dream and told me to go back home. And for me, when he comes and tells me to go, I have to go. And that one goes. And then you go on a hunt, you look for another one. That one also comes, spends a night or two and it goes. But you see, the reason all that is happening is because they are, there is a different spirit in them and there is a different spirit in the place where they have come. So if you do not take time to pray, then you are actually going to be subdued because that person that you're bringing into your house cooks your food, probably cleans the house, probably washes your clothes, irons and does everything. So if you've not actually pre presented this before the Lord, then you, you find things falling apart, you know? And there are testimonies of people that have talked about finding out and making discoveries of their, 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 the people they are living with actually enchanting and doing all sorts of things inside their house. If you sleep on the job and you think that the little details, you can take care of them, then you're going to lose it. 
you're going to lose it. When Samson accepted to be actually, to reveal his secret to Delilah, eventually he actually failed and he was defeated. He eventually fails and he's defeated because the instruction was clear. No razor should ever touch his head because that was the source of his strength at the end of the day. And he, he thought he was strong enough to trust this woman here. He was strong enough to be able to deal with this. But even in that, he forgot that he had actually welcomed an enemy in and they can be able to subdue you when they come into your territory. What am I saying? There is nothing too small for us to seek the counsel of the Lord, okay? Issues about schools where we take our children. I have heard this being mentioned many times. As parents, we take children to schools. Many times we are looking at the cost. Secondly, we are looking at the location. Thirdly, we are looking at, uh, you know, how easy it is for us, you no know, comfort and all that. And then you're looking at the performance. And sometimes some of us are just doing it for the sake of prestige so that they can see us that our children go to certain schools. But you see, you need to seek the counsel of the Lord. Not every school, you can have children born in the same home raised by you, but all of them go to different schools because that is what God has destined them for. They all do not have to prosper in the same school. They can actually be able to prosper in different schools, but that is a decision you humanly cannot reach at. It is a decision that is actually reached at when we seek the counsel of the Lord. May the Lord help us that in this season, we shall learn to entrust every little detail to him and we shall learn to seek his counsel in every area of our lives. And the other issue uh, about this wonderful counselor is that God is gentle. That is why he presents Christ to us in the picture of a child, so meek and humble, so that it is upon us to accept him and accept the counsel that he gives us. Imagine if God had chosen uh, let me give an example, for lack of a better example, you know, maybe if God had chosen Caesar to be the, the, the Messiah, what would it have been? Because already Caesar was a, 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 an authority, yeah? He was already an authority. It would have been easier for the people to probably believe in him because they thought that is actually now the, the, the appearance that Ezekiel already has the power, he has what? Now you're bringing to us this... Uh, meek and gentle and humble man who is a son of a carpenter down the road there down on the streets we have seen him play and now he's coming to us and he's telling us that he is a messiah he's coming to tell us that he's actually the wonderful counselor he's actually coming to tell us that actually he is the savior no but god does it intentionally because you see if god had presented a person like caesar there are some of us that would have never reached him because probably he had a certain class of people that he related with, a certain class of people that he would speak to. But he chose us to bring this person so meek and humble that we would be able to identify with him. Those of us that have actually grown up on the streets, those of us that have played in, or in, or in, in, the, in those uh, places that are not very pleasant, but that is where we were born and we have grown up from there. We went to the gardens, the snacks we knew were actually only jackfruit and matugunda and jambula, for those that know that. You know, those are the only snacks that we knew, not the ones who know the snacks that are bought in the supermarket, no, you know? But he chooses to bring him and position him in a way that even the least person in society can be able to identify with him and actually can be able to accept him with a lot of ease. And he presents this counselor to us so that we are able, all of us, an equal opportunity is available to us that we are able to accept and receive this counsel. One may ask, how, how can I seek the counsel of Jesus Christ, the wonderful counselor? And there are just four things for us to think about, probably, that we may want to ask ourselves. We, may, we actually can seek his counsel through listening to him when we pray. We can seek his counsel through reading his word. We can seek his counsel through other believers that he uses. And we can seek his counsel through the various experiences that he allows us to go through. When we go through certain experiences in life, many other times that we are quick to blame or to judge, to cry, to regret, but we lose, we miss out the, the point or the lesson for us to learn that comes out of it. And there are still other things that we want to ask. 
And I'm asking you today, how much time do you spend in prayer each day? And whose counsel do you seek? Yeah? How much time do you spend in prayer? Some of us typically get onto the call and when somebody is praying, that is the only time you're praying. You do not have a personal time that you're seated and you have devoted that you're going to pray. Whereas communion praying is very good, but you need a personal time with the Lord that you're able to speak and you're able to listen when he speaks back. So why, when do you seek and whose counsel do you seek if you are not doing that, okay? How much time do you spend in his word? Do you find solutions in his word? Do you share with your children when you find the solutions through the word so that they might also believe it? I was reading as I was preparing uh, somewhere and uh, one of these uh, writers actually says that he, in one of his researches, he discovers for those that have encountered the book, the Harry Potter, and he, he, he says the, the, the book, the Harry Potter book, has caught the attention of children and children love the book so much because they made them believe the power that is in the words. But you see the book, the Harry Potter book is actually just full of sorcery and witchcraft. It's not actually a very good book or novel or, or, or movie that children should be watching because it just invokes those evil spirits in the children. And it teaches them the art of believing the magic in the words. Now, if you and me are not spending time in the word of the Lord and seeking our solutions in the word of the Lord and sharing with our children about this, then we are unable to make them appreciate this word of the Lord because then they read and read the words literal and they don't seem to understand anything. When we say the Lord is a healer, can we mean it when we say it? Can we pray through that word? Can we actually testify that we prayed and this is the word of the Lord and we stand about upon the word of the Lord and show and teach them so that they can be able to understand the power that actually is in this word of the Lord. The first thing for us is when things around us seem to be falling apart, many times we receive counsel uh, from the Lord, but we don't seem to take note of it because we are overtaken by whatever is happening around and you don't seem to understand what exactly is happening. In that, the Lord is actually giving us counsel, yet many other times that we actually do not receive the counsel or let the counsel actually pass by us. We are engrossed either in the tears and in the emotions that we lose out what it is. I have learned uh, to ask usually a question nowadays that uh, maybe uh, actually, I choose to look at what it is for me that God wants me to learn out of every situation. It, it, however tough it is, I get disappointed. I feel so bad, but I sit and I say, at the end of the day, there is something that God wants me to learn out of it. And I choose to pick the lesson that comes out of it. There are relations that have died for me. And when they have gone, I sometimes, I feel bad, but I, I realize, I sit back and I'm evaluating. I'm like, but God, why? Where did I go wrong? What wrong did I do? I didn't say anything wrong. I did not do anything wrong to this person. They have gone. And then while I sit back, I just take stock of my time while I was with, interacting probably with a particular person. And then I realize actually, I spent a lot of time with this person. I spoke a lot of things that were not necessarily in relation to uh, my, 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 in relation to, 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 to my work with God. There was a lot of loose talk. There was a lot of probably careless speech when I'm with them. And there is a lot of time that would be wasted. So I realize actually I save a lot more time. I have a lot more time to do other things. And I thank God the season for the relationship has passed and it has ended. And I am a believer of that, that people come into our lives for seasons. And when their purpose has been fulfilled, it is okay. They can move on and we move on. Not everyone is supposed to come and be permanent in our lives. Only Christ actually comes to be permanent in our lives. You know? So I learned to appreciate the season and the time. And and I learn to make the most of it. But also when it goes, I don't want to cry over it anymore. I want to sit and do a personal reflection, do a personal evaluation. I go back to God and repent. I say, I'm sorry for this, or I thank you for this. 
and I move on and that is it. So it is important for us to know that in the seasons when things are falling apart, God is actually speaking to us, but many other times that we do not actually take note of the counsel that he's giving us. Then the other thing that I want us to ponder about is, do you trust that other believers, do you, do you, do you trust other believers when they come to share and uh, a message, uh, bring a message to you and tell you this message is from God, or this is what the Lord has spoken to me about you, or this is what the Lord is actually telling you to do. There are some of us who do not actually listen. We believe if God is to speak, probably he should speak to only you, or God is to speak, he should speak to also you. But you see, there are times when instructions come and they are not actually coming to you, uh, they're not coming from you, but they are coming to you. So you need to be humble. Me and you need to be humble enough to accept what God is actually uh, telling us. I recently had an encounter and uh, I, I was praying for something and believing God for uh, 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 some work to go through. And then uh, a friend of mine called and I was praying with her. She's a dear sister in the Lord. We have been praying with her. And that particular evening, uh, we agreed because she'll do uh, Wednesdays. She sealed up her Wednesdays as time of prayer. So I, we spoke in the night and I told her, don't forget this prayer request, please, as you go to present it to the Lord. And then she called me later in the evening and she told me, my sister, please, I have been praying. And the instructions that has come to me is to ask you to actually forgive. There is someone you're holding, just forgive. And that was it. And I'm like, wait a minute, you went to church at 8 a.m. You left to church 6 p.m. And this is what God has said. I should do what? I actually sat back and looked at her. And I'm like, God, I am sorry anyway. Let me do what you actually have instructed. So are you humble enough to accept uh, what uh, messages that are brought to you from other believers? Because counsel can come through other people when the Lord actually presents it unto us. How is Jesus our wonderful counselor? Today, he gives us the strength and the courage to take action. In Matthew 28, 18, he says, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given unto me. Okay. And we know that actually when we pray through this scripture and we declare it, he has actually done great and mighty things. And this we have sought and we have tapped into it and we have seen it actually work. Okay. Today he is a wonderful counselor because we have seen him heal people like he did during that time. Okay. When they went to him and they were asking him about, uh, uh, about who he was and what he called himself and how he spoke to them, he, he, he spoke with such confidence. And today he is calling me and me to speak with confidence about this Messiah that we have believed, confidence about the, the birth of Christ and the redemption of the world through him. He is calling us to speak and he's calling us to present ourselves so that we can be used of and by him. Okay. Jesus also, like he did in, in, in the times of uh, in the time when he was still uh, when he walked on earth, he 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 healed he he served people. Okay, the the woman the woman that was going to be stoned when he met this woman, and then everybody people were saying this woman is adulterous. We should be able to stone her, and he asks them, okay, you who has no sin, be the first to cast a stone, and this woman is saved by that. You know, she cannot be cast, uh, they cannot cast a stone because even those that are pointing fingers are not any better, they're not any righteous. Because you are not doing this particular thing does not mean you are actually better, okay? Because before the Lord, the sin that we commit is all sin at the end of the day. And then this woman is actually saved. We have seen God deal with us. When we sit back and reflect on our lives and what where we are coming from, we surely do celebrate the love and the, uh, the birth of Christ that has been demonstrated to us all these years and we do not take it for granted. He still heals us as a wonderful counselor, even when things don't seem to be working out. People have gone to hospitals and we've had testimonies, friends. People have gone to hospitals and doctors have worked and reached a point where they say, I think we have done our best and we have exhausted and they begin guessing yeah they guess because you ask somebody what do the doctors say i went here they said this i went there there is sometimes you know when you 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 seek you seek uh you try to seek uh 
opinions of the different doctors, you end up getting different results and you're wondering if it is me the same person and it is the same thing that is disturbing me, then why are there different opinions? But you see, we have seen people go through that whole cycle there and they still come back and the Lord actually does heal. So as a wonderful counselor, he still heals us. As a wonderful counselor, he still delivers us from bondages. As a wonderful counselor, he still listens to us and accepts us even when we have fallen. He still opens his arms unto us. He knows all things that concern us. He knows our present. He, know, he knows our past. He knows our present and he knows our future. As it is demonstrated in, in Jeremiah 29, 11, there is nothing that we can hide from him as a wonderful counselor. He is the best. When God, when Christ was going back and he tells uh, the, the disciples that I am going back, but I am going to, I'm leaving you a counselor, the Holy Spirit, you know, and indeed today when we seek his counsel, when we seek his guidance, he does offer it unto us. He does avail it unto us. He does not deny anything uh, to us, you know? And he is no respecter of man or protocol. He did not care. And even today he does not care whether the doctors are working there. If it has come to a point where he needs to come and deliver you and to heal you, he actually does so. It does not matter where you are coming from, whether you were on the streets, he picks you up from there, he cleans you up, he clothes you, and he presents you on the table with mighty men and mighty women. He is, he is not, he breaks all, all protocol, you know, and that has been him. When he walked into the temple, he did not go and ask who is, you know, if you go to the markets, because the, the, the temple had to be turned out to be a market. When you go to the markets, you always look for the market master, you know? Today we have changed the names, but in the past they used to be called market masters. You look for the market master, to be able to ask for his permission, to allow you to actually speak to the traders in the market. He did not. He walked in and he stood and he just went and turned the tables down and threw things and bags and whatever he was in was flying. And he tells them, you have turned my father's house into a den of robbers. And they are looking at the like, is this Joseph, is this the son of Joseph, the carpenter? Then how then can he say, this is his father's house, you know? And then he is asked and he boldly stands and he presents himself. As, a, as, as, as Christians, we are called to be able to wear that kind of boldness, not to be violent, but that kind of boldness in proclaiming the gospel of Christ, that kind of boldness in proclaiming this Messiah that we so much desire and we celebrate. But then we are overtaken by the celebrations of, the, of Christmas, the day, and we, we end up forgetting actually what in the package that is in need for us. And so I, I encourage us that even as we get into this season here, may we not be overtaken by the celebrations alone. May we be reminded that we prepare our hearts to embrace and to receive him, embrace and open our hearts to him, receive his counsel, to seek his counsel, to commune with him as opposed to just the clothes and the eating and whatever is there that many people are usually very excited about. May the Lord himself continue to minister minister unto us in this season, that as we prepare our hearts to open up and to be able to receive and to embrace this wonderful counselor, that we may be able to embrace this Messiah that is going to, that we, talk, we, we are told, that we read about, that we have experienced, that we may be able to embrace him in totality. And Christ alone in this season, he is the reason for the season that we should not actually be able to miss whatever it is that the season has got to offer unto us. It is a season for us to open up so that we can be able to share this gospel as far as we can and to be able to make his love and to demonstrate his love to us, as many people as we can. It is a season for us to be able to share this love and to share this hope that has been given unto us because we are living in a very hopeless world and people have lost it all. But yet in him, we have got hope. Yet in him, we have got a peace, as the Bible actually clearly puts it, that transcends human understanding. And that's why sometimes people are wondering and are looking at you, how are you able to stay calm when ABCD is happening? It is not just you that does that, but it is the Christ that you have accepted. It is him that you have embraced. It is him that prevails in you that actually is able to actually keep you calm. Because humanly speaking, there is a bad side to all of us. 
and we can actually manifest it. But only different, the only difference in us is Christ, the position of Christ in our lives. How you position him, how you have, have embraced him, and how you walk daily with him is actually what causes the difference and the transformation in us. I pray that tonight as we continue, the Lord will continue to speak to us in this season, that we may continue to open our hearts and prepare to receive him in an amazing way in this season to the honor and glory of his name. May the Lord bless us all. Amen, amen. Thank you so much, uh, Sister Peace, for the word that you have brought to us with uh, clarity. And we pray that the Lord blesses you as you continue to, to experience his counsel and his governance in your life. Um, uh, uh, Miss Joy Mukisa, kindly come on and take prayer responses. Okay, thank you so much, uh, dear sister, Mrs. Peace. Yes, let us uh, join in prayer. First, to thank God for his word, because the word of God is is sent to us to to rebuke us to to straighten us in his way and to heal us so let us begin with thanksgiving for this word father in the name of jesus we come before you continuing to tarry in your presence father we thank you for feeding us this night thank you for your word that has come out straight to us. Thank you so much. Lord, we receive this word. We receive this word with thanksgiving. Thank you so much, Lord, that this is a season you desire us to prepare our hearts to receive you, to renew us, Lord, not to just be overwhelmed with uh, celebration, but Lord, to receive you anew in our lives. We thank you, Lord. Thank you for this word. Lord, we receive this word. Receive your exhortation with thanksgiving. Thank you, Father. Lord, we thank you. Thank you so much for your word. As your word in Isaiah 55 tells us that your word does not return to you void, but it accomplishes every purpose to which you've sent it for. Lord, we pray that even as you've released this word to us this day, we pray that it will accomplish the purpose to which you've sent it for, Lord, in our lives, in our families, wherever each and every one of us is on this land. Lord, we pray that in the cathedral, the church, the body of Christ, Lord, we pray that this word will accomplish. It will not return to you void. In the name of Jesus, Father, we thank you. We worship you and give you praise. In Jesus' name, amen. Father, we continue to pray and thank you for your servant that you have used to speak to us. Lord, we thank you. Thank you, Lord, that she has emptied herself for us. Father, your word says that those who water others, they will be watered. Lord, we pray that she has emptied herself for us. Lord, we pray that you water her by the power of the Holy Spirit. Water her, refresh her, renew her, oh Lord, as she has emptied herself for us. We pray that you bless her, bless her family, bless the ministry you've called her for. Bless her, oh Lord, in the name of the Lord Jesus. Thank you, Father, for using her. We pray that you will protect her. You will bless her. You will shield her from any form of backlash because of this that she has released. Thank you, Lord. And we pray that your angels will minister to her, oh, Father, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Jesus' name. Amen. Yes. Um, our sister... Talk to, talk to us about this wonderful counselor. Counselor who knows the plans he has for us. A can in, like it is in Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 11. I first want us to bring repentance for 
avoiding. I wouldn't, I would say avoiding, but also walking in our own understanding and not seeking his counsel. And uh, walking in our own counsel, in the counsel of what the world has set for us, what we have known because of the status of education that we have achieved. And we have not sought him, but actually we have said we are his followers. But this wonderful counselor, we have not walked in this relationship of seeking counsel of him. Let us ask God today, as this word has come forth, let us come before him and ask for forgiveness. Father, we come before you. You are a wonderful counselor, a counselor who desires good for us, who has the best plans for us, who knows everything about us, who has every desire that this counselor even came down for us. He was born in, uh, in, in, in flesh so that he would die for our sin. But we have rejected his counsel. We have walked in our own understanding. We have walked in the things he has added unto us, the education he has given us, uh, the, the things of the world. And we have not sought him. We come before you, Father. We ask that you would forgive us and have mercy upon us for walking in our own counsel, for walking in the counsel of men, than your counsel, not for not even seeking you for the littlest details, for not even minding of walking in relationship with you. Father, we, we are reminded in your word of Enoch, who walked with you 300 years, walking with you in relationship. Our forefathers, Abraham, walked with you in relationship with you. David, he inquired of you about everything, not no, no, no battle failed him. But Lord, we have walked in our own counsel. We have not sought you, even if it comes to our children going to which school, even if it comes, our sister told us, maids will just come in, 10 of them in just a few months. Not seeking about that. Lord, forgive us. Our money has blinded us and we have rejected the counsel of, of our wonderful counselor. Lord, today we ask that you forgive us and have mercy and cleanse us with the blood of Jesus. Let these records that, that have been written upon us, Lord, for walking in our own counsel be blotted out. The enemy has been jubilating because we have walked in his counsel and, 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 and used our own understanding. And Lord, it is his kingdom that has been benefiting. Lord, we pray that as this one has come forth, Lord, these structures, these, these ways will be broken down. And Lord, we shall come back to walking in your ways in seeking counsel of this wonderful counselor who knows everything about us, who has chosen to love us and to die for us. Lord, we thank you and worship you in Jesus' name. Amen. Yes, uh, uh, our sister also talked about, he gave us two, 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 two patterns to look at. Pattern of Samson, who served, who was born in a circumstance of of, of saving the Israelites from the Philippine Israelites are under the Roman rule. But she also talked about them, the, the, the people who God chose to, to operate through, to, to use, to bring these people to birth. No not defilement came upon them. So let us, let us come before God. Uh, the defilements, we have brought upon ourselves and uh, you, you, defilement, you know, when, when we are defiled, the, the, we cannot stand before the Lord. What are those defilements in your life? Uh, we are reminded of uh, Daniel and his friends, even when they lived in Babylon. 
They purposed not to be defiled with the king's meat. In that time, it was a physical king's meat. What are the defilements on your table? Where are you working? Are you signing the checks? Are you putting the extra money on the fuel's uh, receipt? What are those defilements that have made you not to even resemble this wonderful counselor who was born without defilement? And he saved the world. Let us come before God. What are those things that are defiling you? Is it in, in speech? We see that when Daniel and our friends purposed, we see how God came through and in, even when they were in Babylon. Today we are living in a very Babylon kind of style, wherever it is. But Daniel and their friends were able to show the people of Babylon that this kingdom cannot be shaken. Let us bring repentance to God for the defilements that have made us to assume this wonderful counselor that he has given us. Father, we come before you. We continue to ask for mercy. There are lots of defilements in our lives. It is just unforgiveness, but it will defile us, Lord, because we are your temples. It is just anger. It is just that that weight we have refused to let go that has disqualified us to be before you. Lord, even as we have come this night, we ask that let nothing of 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 of, of the world support us because we shall miss out on this wonderful counselor. We shall miss out on your counsel. There's so much deformment around us, Lord. A lot of immorality. Where the world has said today it is okay. Why won't people first sleep together before they're married? It is well. Lord, these defilements, Lord, that have made us to miss you out. Today it is okay to sign the big checks. Today it is okay to put extra money on those receipts. Today it is okay. Lord, forgive us where we have also indulged in these defilements that have made us to miss you, that have made us to resemble Saturn and not you, the wonderful counselor. Forgive us, O oh Lord. Forgive us that we have failed you, Jesus. And Samson, without the, all these defilements, Lord, they was able to save the people from the hand of the enemy. But Lord, we have fallen short of this, Lord, because of the king's mate, because of what we have partaken. Forgive us the lies, that little lie we have said, what we have looked at with our eyes, what we have listened to, Lord, we ask that you'll forgive us and have mercy upon us. Have mercy, Lord. Have mercy. Bring us back to you, Lord, to resemble you, in, to resemble this wonderful counselor who is true, who is, who is humble, who is gentle. In Jesus' name. Amen. Continuing to, to bring repentance before God. Uh, our sister talked about trusting God, relying on God. We, there are times we have prayed. I'm reminded, yes, the Spirit is bringing this to remembrance when Peter was, was locked up in prison and the people were praying and the angel came and, and, and Peter was released. But when he came and knocked on the door, many were saying, no, this is a ghost. How many times are we doubting God even when he's answered? We're reminded of Simon Peter when, when, when Jesus called him, come, to walk on the water. But when he looked down on the, on the water because of fear, he started to drown. Let's come before God. 
when we've not trusted him to does having a quiet time and has reading first uh, second chronicles some of these kings because they didn't trust god they started well but one of them he sought uh, help from another king and not on god yet before he had relied on god and because of that uh god was angry with him god is not happy when we don't rely on him it makes us to lose out let us ask god to forgive us when we have not trusted in him because every time you do not trust god it means you're trusting something else than him you're trusting money you're trusting other things other friends you're trusting something else that is not god father we come before you forgive us forgive us when we have not trusted in you you desire us to completely trust and rely on you in everything that we do but father we have trusted in money we have trusted in our jobs we we we, we have trusted in in, in our husbands and children in the ministers of god we have trusted in so much our parents that is not you father we ask that you will forgive us and have mercy because of trusting in this there are things you we have not been able to to accomplish for you because we have not trusted you at times you even told us no leave that place and go here but we have refused because you, we are saying god how will i survive there how will i do this and and we have looked at these things in our own strength and trusting in you than relying on you there are battles that we have lost because we have trusted in our own strength lord may you forgive us lord jeremiah chapter 17 says cast is he who, who trusts in man Lord, we have opened doors to curses because we have not trusted in you. Lord, we ask that you forgive us and have mercy. Have mercy this night as you're calling us to trust in you, as you're calling us to turn to you, Lord, as we are preparing for your, for, for your birth, that, Lord, our trust will not be in the things of the world, will not be in anything, but it will completely and entirely be in you because this wonderful counselor, he's able, he's able to do exceedingly abundantly above all we can ever think about. He's able to see us through because he knows us. He knows our every need. He knows our everything. Lord, help us that our eyes will be on you because our help only comes from him who made heaven and earth this is the wonderful counselor who is god who has been there with god who is everything who is the son who is the high priest who has gone through everything for us so that we are saved help us lord that this night we shall rely on you when david relied on you there is no battle he didn't he, he lost he won every battle help us lord to rely on you to trust in you to 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 to, to depend on you for everything even those small little details we shall trust you lord even in this season when people are saying the economy economy we shall trust you because silver and gold belong to you Father, we thank you. We worship you in Jesus' name. Amen. Yes, let us continue in prayer. My sister talked about, she gave us four, four things. Yes, we've looked at the wonderful counselor. But also, he, she, the second was the mighty God. Do we know how much God is mighty? Hebrews chapter 4 verse 15 says, he's the high priest who can identify with our infirmities. He has been there. Tell us in a different circumstances at workplaces, in ministry, in the nation, the church. If we are to remember the season of COVID, who this mighty God who has taken away who are wearing masks? 
this is this mighty God, the mighty God who is a healer, the mighty God, our, who, who, who is a high priest, who, has, who can identify with our weaknesses. As Hebrews chapter 4, verse 15, what is it that is on, on, on our plate that he cannot be able to do? What is it that is upon you and you feel, God, this one, I don't know how to maneuver through. I'm reminded of Psalm 18. It says, it is by God that we can leap over walls. There is no wall. If Jericho walls were able to break down by his strength and power, there is nothing that is too hard for this God. Let us come before him, trusting him. What is it? Give it to him. He is able, more than able. He's the one who can move mountains without you knowing it. Is it a child who, is, who, who, who has made your head pain? Is it that marriage? Is it for us that are single? Is it that, you know, that place of giving up? Is it the resources? He is able because we've been told he's the mighty God and he can identify with every, he came here in flesh. He knows it all. Let us go before him and for everyone, wherever, give it to him. Give, speak to him about that which is heavy. He is able to go to see us through. Father, we come before you this evening. You know everyone on this call. You know our points of need. We acknowledge that you are a mighty God. You who was able to part the Red Sea. We are at this gate of midnight where you were able to deal with Pharaoh who had held the Israelites for over 400 years. There are those things we are seeing like they are so mighty. But God, Goliath was brought down because of your mighty power that worked through David by the power of the Holy Spirit. So, Father, we continue to come before you. you your word says you're the same yesterday, today, and forever. If you're able to deal with Pharaoh at this gate in those times, you're able to deal with whatever circumstance, whatever walls that are before us, be it walls of sickness, be it walls of of resources, be it walls of at our workplaces, walls of, of children who have gone wayward, walls of in marriages, walls in, even in this nation, in the church where the enemy is raising flood, floods, sending floods like anything. You are able. We acknowledge that you are mighty. Lord, we pray that this night, even as we are in your presence, those walls will break down. Will you give us the strength to leap over Every wall, every wall that is standing before us, those walls of Jericho that were able to break down. Lord, we are we, we also trust in you that whatever walls that are standing, because you are mighty God, they are going to break down, Lord, because we have chosen to trust in you. We are believing, and we know that as we brought repentance for not trusting in you, you've forgiven us, and we know that because you're mighty. You're walking through every situation in our homes, in our families, in every place. Lord, have your way. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. Yes. The third, the third thing that is an everlasting Father, uh, like Romans chapter 8, verse 28. It's, that all things happen for good for those that love the Lord. Two things work out for good. I love the Lord and and oh, our God is mighty. He's an everlasting Father. Let us thank God because we have a Father who can identify. He's the Father of fathers. We can hang unto Him for everything. Personally, I, uh, I, I didn't grow up with my father. But when I met my God when I was young, I, I, have met, I met a father, 
a father who has never I have never felt like I he's a, been a father. So let us let us bring what wherever it is. We well, have been disappointed and let us come to him. There are those moments where you feel no, maybe he's not there. He's a great friend, he's a great father. Father, we continue to come before you. We ask that Lord. You give us the strength to, to hang on to you because you're an everlasting father, a father who never forsakes us. Probably for some of us, our fathers have gone to be with the Lord, they have gone away, or for some of us, we didn't grow up with them. But Lord, you are a great father. We pray that Lord, you will help us to hang on to you. You will help us to experience your father's love in our lives and help us to hang on to you for everything. Because you, you, tell, you tell us to ask of you, our father who has everything, who owns the whole earth, who, is, who has made this earth, and it belongs to you. Help us, Lord, to look unto you for everything, to know that even the circumstances in our lives all are for good. You are a great father who never wishes us to perish. But Lord, you have everlasting life and to love you in the name of Jesus. Yes, the fourth was the Prince of Peace. This peace that surpasses all human understanding. That circumstances can be around us but he's able to give us that peace. Lord, we thank you because we have you who is the Prince of Peace in our lives. Thank you because of this peace, a peace that the world cannot give, but a peace that comes from you, a peace that the world cannot understand. We thank you for this peace. Father, we pray that even this day, someone on the call, maybe for us who have lost this peace and the, and the cares of the world have taken us, forgive us. We pray that, Lord, you restore us. For someone on this call who is going through a season of unrest, we speak peace to, the situa to that situation, that peace will come back, peace will flow through our bodies, through our hearts, through our minds. In the name of Jesus, for whatever the situation, that peace will overwhelm us, Lord. That these situations will not take us. But Lord, your peace will be with us, Lord. In the name of Jesus. Father, we pray that you give us even the grace to endure through the situations. And the peace that surpasses all understanding will be guard our hearts and our minds. In the name of the Lord Jesus, you who is the Prince of Peace, fill us with your peace. Fill us even in this season. Fill us with your peace, Lord. Help us to experience your peace afresh and deliver us from every form of unrest. In Jesus' name, amen. Yes, um, continuing with this peace, we are going to pray. Uh, as as our sister shared with us, that this he's, he's the Prince of Peace is the peace that uh, breaks down, that peace with God that breaks down every wall of hostility in our lives. We, we, each of us have families, lands where we come from. And at times we have seen our family members torn in pieces, so many things, even in this nation. So let us pray that this peace of God will break down, break down every wall of hostility in our lives, in our families, in the church, these divisions that shall be won through the peace of God and the nation, especially in the season as we prepare for his birth. We pray that these walls of hostility will be broken down. Come in the name of the Lord Jesus, we continue to come before you. Lord, we pray that every wall of hostility that has been operating in our lives, uh, tearing us away from you, 
cutting us away from you. We pray that it will be broken down. The walls of hostility in our, in our families. Lord, we pray that in this season there will be a reconciliation in families. Lord, that wall of hostility will be broken down in the name of Jesus. We break down every wall of hostility in our nation, in the church, that has caused divisions, that has caused parting away of and, and caused your kingdom not to expand. Lord, we pray that every wall of hostility, even in the nation, will be broken down, broken down in the name of the Lord Jesus. We break down every wall of hostility by the peace of God. We break it down in the name of Jesus, even at our workplaces, everywhere you've placed us. We break down every wall of hostility in the name of the Lord Jesus. And we speak peace, this peace of God that reconciles us back to the Father, that it will prevail even in this season, in our hearts, in our lives, in, in, in everything that concerns us, in our families, in our marriages, in the nation and the church. We pray that this peace will prevail in this season. In Jesus' name. Amen. Yes. Uh, yes, as you're about to conclude. Yes. Uh, it, questions that were given us given to us by a sister to, to, to ponder about how do you often seek this counsel we, we bring repentance and ask for forgiveness for pride working in our own understanding the things that have been small and, and we've sought our own counsel let us pray that God will deliver us from pride because when we don't seek the counsel of God and, and we take things in our own hands. We are walking in pride. Father, we ask that you forgive us for pride. It was pride that brought Satan and his and other angels, the demons, down. Lord, we pray that you forgive us from pride. Yeah, you've told us that the, the, the wonderful counselor, he's gentle, he's meek, he's humble, and we are meant to, 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 to identify with him. That we cannot identify with him when we are walking in pride. One of the sins, according to Proverbs chapter 6, that you hate, the first sin is pride. We ask that you forgive us and deliver us from every form of pride. When we have got sick, we have not told you. We are just walking about the children, parenting, anything. Which schools to take children, what to do. Lord, we are just walking as the world is moving. We ask that you forgive us. We pray that you deliver us from pride in every way, in our thoughts, and in every way, even concerning our marriages, everything, ministry. And we pray that, Lord, you clothe us with humility and the fear of God. Clothe us with humility, my master, so that we can identify with this wonderful counselor. In Jesus' name, amen. We are also we're asked how we seek the counsel, listening to him, reading his word, different people that speak to us, the different circumstances through which he tells us to go through. How much time do you spend in prayer? How much time do you spend in his word? Yes, the world is running fast and we are running with the world. That we are having less time in the world. A lot of time on social media and less time in his word. Let us ask for forgiveness. And we ask that even as we, we will wait for his birth, we shall come back. Because uh, Joshua chapter 1 verse 8, God told Joshua, for you to prosper, do not let this book of the Lord depart from your mouth. What are we speaking? Let us, let us come before God and, and, help and, to, to, and ask for forgiveness that you will increase our hunger for his word, for his presence, and, and because it's through his word that we can pray. We can speak to him in a language he understands, and that's his word. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus, we continue to come before you. <coughs> Ask that in this season, you will increase our hunger for your word. Forgive us when we have spent time in so many things, and, and we've left your word. Ask that, Lord, you have mercy. And we pray that you will increase our hunger for your word and, 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 and increase our time 
to spend in prayer because it is only through your word that we can communicate with you in prayer, a language you understand. Help us, Lord, to also be doers of the word, not just hearers. In the name of Jesus, we shall, what you speak to us, the circumstances you bring to us, we shall sit, ponder, and see you in these circumstances speaking to us and not to just go through them. In the name of the Lord Jesus, help us. Help us, Lord. Help us to also be humble to receive from you, even if it's other people that have brought the word. Like we are reminded of King David, when Prophet Nathan came to him, he was able to receive this word of rebuke from you, Lord. And he was able to come down and ask for mercy. Help us, Lord. Give us that humble heart to receive from you, even if it's rebuke. You shall not retaliate by saying, oh, for me, I'm not like this, self-righteousness, but Lord, we shall humble ourselves and ask for your mercy because you're merciful and wonderful counselor. In the name of Jesus. Father, we pray, we continue to also pray in this season that you wear us with boldness. The apostles ask for boldness so that they would preach your word. Clothe us with boldness. Where we have been fearful, Lord, we pray you clothe us with boldness to speak your word with boldness, to proclaim the gospel, the good news of the Messiah. With boldness that, Lord, you, your kingdom will win many souls to you. In the name of the Lord Jesus. And, Lord, we continue to pray that you open our hearts to embrace you as our wonderful counselor embracing you to, to walk in relationship daily with you in relationship not to just embrace you and it is that but to walk daily with you and in relationship with you in the name of the lord jesus because you know everything psalm 139 you know our, our, our going up our going down you know everything what can we hide from you so help us to walk in this relationship in seeking your counsel and in loving you. And, and help us even with your counsel that we shall follow it. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Father, you, we've also known that your wonderful counselor who heals your people. We ask for healing in every aspect of our lives in this season. You are a healer. Lord, I've experienced you heal. Uh, when that headache came, I took the panadols. Lord, they didn't heal until I sought your counsel. And Lord, when you revealed it, and Lord, it was you who healed. You are reminded of this woman who had that issue of blood. She had sought all physicians, but when she touched your cloak, Lord, the bleeding stopped. You are a healer. Some of us on this call are sick. Maybe people in our families are sick. Those we know are relatives. Lord, we ask that your healing hand, you are our healer. May you heal. Whatever door is opened of sin, whatever it is, may you forgive and bring healing in this season. Heal our land, Lord, from all sickness. Be it Ebola, you're able, you're mighty. We ask for healing. For some of us, it's emotional healing. We've been wounded. We ask for healing. Some of us, it's financial. Some of us, whatever aspect of our lives, Lord, that you see, we pray that, Lord, you bring healing, our wonderful counselor. Father, we thank you for this time you've given us to be with you. Thank you so much, our wonderful counselor. Receive the glory. Receive the praise. Receive the honor. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen.